June and Jennifer Gibbons were born on April 11, 1963. They were identical twins who grew up in Wales. They became known as the Silent Twins, since they only communicated with each other. They wrote works of fiction. Both women were admitted to Broadmoor Hospital, where they were held for 11 years. Hello friends, you are on the Spooky Tales channel. This video is dedicated to twins, June and Jennifer Gibbons. If you want to support our channel, please subscribe, like the video, and write your wishes in the comments. And so we continue. June and Jennifer were the daughters of Caribbean immigrants, Gloria and Aubrey Gibbons. The Gibbons family moved from Barbados to the United Kingdom in the early 1960s as part of the Windrush generation. Gloria was a housewife and Aubrey worked as a technician for the Royal Air Force. The couple also had three other children. Greta was born in 1957, David was born in 1959, and Rosie was born in 1967. In 1960, Aubrey went to stay with a relative in Coventry and soon qualified as a staff technician. Gloria followed, along with Greta and David, several months later. The twins were born on 11th April 1963 at a military hospital in Aden, where their father had been deployed. The family soon relocated, first to England and, in 1974, to Haverford West, Wales. The twin sisters were inseparable, and their language, a sped-up Bajan Creole, made it difficult for people to understand them. In 2023, June said, We had a speech impediment. Our parents couldn't understand a word that we were saying. Nobody understood, so we stopped talking. At least, can we speak now? And be ourselves. Lose our inhibitions. And be ourselves. The Gibbons children were the only black children in the community and were often ostracized at school. This proved to be traumatic for the twins, eventually causing their school administrators to dismiss them early each day so that they might avoid bullying. Their language became even more idiosyncratic at this time. Soon it was unintelligible to others. Their language, or idioglossia, qualified as an example of cryptophagia, exemplified by the twins' simultaneous actions, which often mirrored each other. The twins became increasingly reserved and eventually spoke to no one except each other and their younger sister Rose. The girls continued to attend school, although they refused to read or write. In 1974, a medic administering vaccinations at the school noted their impassive behavior and notified a child psychologist. The twins began seeing a succession of therapists who tried unsuccessfully to get them to communicate with others. They were sent to separate boarding schools in an attempt to break their isolation, but the pair became catatonic and entirely withdrawn when parted. In their later teenage years, the twins began using drugs and alcohol. In 1981, the girls committed several crimes, including vandalism, petty theft, and arson, which led to their being admitted to Broadmoor Hospital, a high-security mental health hospital. The twins were sentenced to indefinite detention under the Mental Health Act of 1983. They remained at Broadmoor for 11 years. June later blamed this lengthy sentence on their selective muteness. Juvenile delinquents get two years in prison. We got 12 years of hell because we didn't speak. We lost hope. I wrote a letter to the Queen, asking her to get us out. But we were trapped. Placed on high doses of antipsychotic medications, they found themselves unable to concentrate. Jennifer developed a neurological disorder resulting in involuntary, repetitive movements. Their medications were adjusted sufficiently to allow them to continue the copious diaries they had begun in 1980, and they were able to join the hospital choir, but they lost most of their interest in creative writing. The case achieved notoriety due to newspaper coverage by journalist Marjorie Wallace of the Sunday Times. Wallace later wrote a book about the two titled The Silent Twins, published in 1986 by Prentice Hall. According to Wallace, the girls had a long-standing agreement that if one died, the other must begin to speak and live a normal life. I think up to today, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a feeling of total freedom. It's unbelievable that I'm actually going out in the big wide world. During their stay in the hospital, 
They began to believe that one of them needed to die, and after much discussion, Jennifer agreed to make the sacrifice of her life. In March 1993, the twins were transferred from Broadmoor to the more open Caswell Clinic in Bridgend, Wales. On arrival, Jennifer could not be roused. She was taken to the hospital, where she died soon after of acute myocarditis, a sudden inflammation of the heart. There was no evidence of drugs or poison in her system. At the inquest, June revealed that Jennifer had been acting strangely for about a day before their release. Her speech had been slurring, and she had said that she was dying. On the trip to Caswell, she had slept in June's lap with her eyes open. On a visit a few days later, Wallace recounted that June was in a strange mood. She said, I'm free at last, liberated, and at last Jennifer has given up her life for me. She also described it as a tsunami, washing her of her sins and freeing her sister. Jennifer was interred in St. Martin's Cemetery, Haverford West, Pembrokeshire, Wales. After Jennifer's death, June gave interviews with Harper's Bazaar and The Guardian. By 2008, she was living quietly and independently near her parents in West Wales. She has worked to put the past behind her, is no longer under the supervision of psychiatric services, and has gained community acceptance. The family had experienced significant distress as a result of the girl's incarceration, according to an interview with her sister Greta from 2016. She blamed Broadmoor for ruining their lives and for neglecting Jennifer's health. She had wanted to file a lawsuit against Broadmoor, but Aubrey and Gloria refused, saying it would not bring Jennifer back. The pair were the subject of the 1986 television drama The Silent Twins, broadcast on BBC Two, and the Inside Story documentary Silent Twin Without My Shadow, which aired on BBC One in September 1994. A play based on Wallace's book, titled Speechless, debuted in London in 2011. The twin story also inspired the 1998 Manic Street Preacher song, Tsunami. Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video. On our channel, you can watch other scary and true and stories. I was shy, and they're not, you know, not speaking. Well, this part, what we can understand what we're saying. If you ask one a question, say June, she have to look at Jenny before they communicate. That that, that seems to run the most to it, you know, look at each other.